Hey guys, welcome to Jen's Creativity Corner. Today we are going to be talking about stained glass, learning from a friend of mine because I've never actually done it before. But you know me, I love learning and trying new crafts, so I thought I would share it with you. So let's get right into it. All right, so here is my friend Lauren. Thanks so much for being willing to help us. Um, so today she's going to show us how to do the basics of stained glass. Stained glass. How long have you been doing this? Four years. Four, Four years. years. Did you teach yourself? Yes. Did you go to class? Yes. Okay. I saw on the internet one afternoon, I was shopping for stuff, and I saw a stained glass eagle feather. Hmm. And I was like, that's really cute, but I don't want to buy it. I want to learn how to make it. So I like Googled some stuff and watched some YouTube videos, and the, the eagle feather was the most basic of all stained glass. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, I think I might can do this. So I jumped in and I bought the stuff that you need. I researched everything and said, okay, what do I have to have? And I started out with like the beginner stuff, which don't, don't waste your money on that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Get the good stuff. And so then I tried it and it was really, really hard in the beginning and I didn't have a grinder and I didn't know what I was doing, but after practice and I just kept at it and and now people buy it from you. Right, That's right. Awesome. The, the biggest thing I've made now um, is hanging in South Carolina in a hair salon. And it's it's probably four feet this way. <laughs> four feet this way. And it's their logo for the salon inside. And she has it in a like a display type window with a light behind it. That's cool. And it's a peacock feather, Ooh. but it's on the, it's on the Idaho Lotto art page. Okay. Yeah. We'll yep. link to that and we'll have pictures for you guys. Yep, yep. So she's going to show us, um, there's a couple of different techniques depending on if the glass were prepared. Um, but she's going to show us with her little setup here, the basics. Yes. So, Go ahead and show okay. us what's going on here. So if you have glass that's already cut, like this, for example, is beveled glass, and it's already pre-cut, and the edges are smooth, I mean, you can bomb, you know, I've got like 30 in there. I like this because you can add it to your own glass if you're making a pattern, so to speak, you know, with your own glass, things like that. You can throw it in there. Um, but I, I like to use these and put them and make a chevron arrow, which you, you might, you might not can see it on that dark background, so I'll move him over. But anyway, so if it's already cut, every piece of glass, even if you hand cut it and then grind it yourself, or if it's pre-cut, you have to put foil, this copper foil, on the, on the glass. And you have to get it even on each side, which, and then you have to... So this is sticky? Yep, it has, it's like tape. Mm -hmm. It's got tape on the back, and then you're gonna... And I just kind of eye it and get it down. You have to get the air bubbles out. So you have to, we call it burnishing once you get it. This is burnishing. Uh, we're this getting is, the air bubbles uh, out we're calling, this, We'll call this redneck burnishing because, <laughs> like, really you should take it and, like, take, like, a, the end of a Sharpie pen mm -hmm. and just kind of rub all your air bubbles out. But I've got great fingernails, so I can do it. So quickly. what kind of metal is the tape? It's just or copper the on the side. It's copper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And it's, it's tedious. Every, every, every single process, I mean, you're using your hands. It's time consuming. It takes a lot of time. But it's a stress reliever. <laughs> that <would be> a stress <laughs> reliever. Well, I mean, I would assume like this part, it, you could sit down and just yeah, kind of watch a movie while exactly. you're doing it. That's what I usually do. Yeah. I take all my stuff, like all my glass pieces, once they're cleaned up and they've been ground, like if I have, like, I always go back to the Red Sox because my pattern's sitting over there. I'll sit on the couch and watch a movie and wrap, wrap the foil, get them all done. That way, when it's time to solder them together, everything's done at the same time. So how long does it take you from start to finish on a piece like the one you're doing today? Okay, this one, since the glass is already cut and it's already done and there's no grinding involved... We'll probably have this done in in an hour. Okay. But now, like you, do, I like to let when you're on your final touches, when you put patina on the on the solder, I like to let that sit for several hours. And okay. Put in it and then wash it. But off it's not like you're actively working on that. Right. There it's are just, some it's steps. done, yeah. but it's just sitting there, kind of curing. Okay. Once you've got your everything finished and you're ready to get it. 
welded up as I like to call it. I use these usually they're on the end like I'll have a like mm -hmm. a square level but just something to get it even right Straight. something to butt it up against something and this is like drywall oh okay that is drywall mm -hmm. <laughs> I just bought a square of it at like Home Depot okay I'm just getting this nailed down here mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's see. I have to make sure he gets lined up right. Okay. All right. And then so we won't move this way. I'm telling you, it's, and there's so many times that like, if something goes wrong or like something moves, you're just like, ah, yeah. you just want to scream. But can you undo it at all? If, if you it, can, and if you, another thing, if you put too much heat for too long mm -hmm. on a joint or something, or a piece, you know, a thin piece of glass, it's going to crack. I'm guessing it, it takes a lot of work and time to undo something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to do that. So now that you've got it set up for soldering, you've got to have some sort of flux. Flux is... So you can get it in liquid or paste form, and I used to use the liquid, and then everybody said, oh, you should try the paste, and it looks like cranberry sauce. What I do first is put it on just the joints, like, to hold it together. So that way I can take this off. Mm -hmm. So it, is this basically like a glue? No, it's just something so that the metal will travel. Okay. And, and, and stick to that copper. Okay. And then, this isn't my favorite, I'm, I'm on the last of my lead here, that's why I'm using this one, but this is just solid wire, you can get this at the hardware store or whatever, and, and then you, you start it What out. kind of wire is it? Um, this one is 50-50. So what kind of material is it? Oh, that is just lead, lead wire. It's just yep. lead. Yep. Okay. So now, we're going to get our little, see that doesn't have enough flux, see how mm. it doesn't travel? Yeah, it's just falling up. He wants more. There we go. Get in there, bud. Okay. Okay. I just like to get my joints done. take this off. Okay, so now we are putting the flux on all the rest mm -hmm. of it. Yep. Because we want all of our copper to be covered with our lead. How much would something like this size cost? Um, and this level of work that you put into it. This one wouldn't be too much. Like, um, I'd probably say fifty dollars. Okay. Not, not too bad. I think it's one of those arts that people would look at and say, "Oh, look, you know." It, it's just glass, it's just basic materials, but they don't realize what all exactly. actually goes into it. You know, like like this is made out of mirror that I cut. Oh yeah, cut, that is cool. And, you know... I'm, it's not just glass, it's mirror. It's just... Is it, working with mirror any harder than glass? Um, no, it's, it's the... Oh, what am I doing? See? Oh, oh I forgot. Right, so it shows you how it doesn't travel. Um, no, mirrors, it's, it's the same. It doesn't have, you know, it's got that backing on it. <clears throat> yeah. 
so it's not really for windows, but working with it's the same. Once you've got both sides both and the sides, edges are all good. Right, right. Then you can take just uh, like 20 gauge or 10 gauge, just the small craft wire. Kind of like, uh, yeah, like right, here, like up there. This little piece, and okay. then you'll just bend it, stick it on, and solder it on to okay. make a little hanger. Mm -hmm. And then I let this cool for a while, and then you got to wash it really good, get the all of the flux off. What do you use to wash it? In, usually um, Dawn. Some sort of dish soap so okay. that really gets the grease off because it's greasy. Mm -hmm. So once you get it all clean, then uh, then you can put the patina on. This doesn't have patina. That's if you left it silver. Leave the lid. It's going to be that color. If you patina, it's going to be dark. So the patina, does it like eat away at it? Is it do you know how it actually works? It's like oxidizes. Yeah, it oxidizes yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. That's what it is. So you just put the patina on there, let it sit for a few hours and wash it off? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't really um, scrub it. Mm -hmm. Now, like around, like when, you know, like if you finished it, the more you rub the patina on it, the darker it's going to get. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of go around the edges and clean off the glass so it doesn't stain the glass. Oh, it you can know, stain it the glass. It can if it stays on there too long. So on this particular piece, like you had pre-purchased the the middle one, but all the rest you all cut by hand. All this is hand cut. Yeah, and I made the pattern just. That's awesome. Off of like a saddle blanket. And then there you can see better the attachments. It's very folk artish. Once it is cleaned up, there's this polish you can use. And then the question is, what if it's not something with just pre-bought glass that's beveled like she had? Like these are very custom designs. We're going to show you cutting and grinding. If we were doing, just for example, you know, you've got your pattern that you're like, okay, I've got to cut a few pieces of glass here. Um, if I've got translucent glass, like clear or something I can see through, I'll just lay it on top. Mm -hmm. And then it's easy just to cut it that way. Most of the time it's not that way. I've got this kind of glass and I can't see anything. So I have to take this and we're going to show you. I try to like get near the edge so I don't have to use a lot of my glass because I'm I, I'm a scrapper. Yeah, yeah. I use scraps and then we're just gonna make any sense to waste it. Exactly. It's kind of how sewers work. Exactly. So then you see our shape that we need there. So I need to get this off by itself. Okay. Does it increase the risk of the rest of it breaking it if you yeah. don't? Okay. So then, what they usually say, um, my favorite teacher, um, this older guy, he always says do your curves first. Mm. So, we'll do that. Okay. And then, so, and then you see there's lots of little pieces of glass, you know, shards everywhere, so you have to kind of be careful. Yeah. So, I, this it looks like you have to apply pretty you deep do. pressure. You do. This isn't the best um, setup. Like, you can buy these uh, little things to put on your table that where you cut the glass, it falls down in these little holes, mm -hmm. the plastic yeah. holes. So, when you have to, when you can't really use this to, you know, break off a big piece, you can use this to bite or, you know, this to get a big piece off. Sometimes I use them together. So, let's see. I'm going to hold it with this. That one. has, like, rubber on the tip. Right. So if you don't apply enough pressure, it's not going to cut. It's not okay. going to break. I mean, do you ever have times where it breaks the wrong way because yep. you didn't do it right? Yep. And then you got to do it again. Or do it a different, you know, get a whole nother piece and start over. Yeah. Then, almost done. Get this little piece off. That's cool, though, that it's such a small little tool. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of glass, I mean, can... Can you do this with all types of glass? I guess that's a, an important question if you're, you know, especially people that just want to reuse things. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, what I like to say is, like, if you've got old picture frames and the glass in them, and you're like, I, need to, I don't use these picture frames anymore. I'm going to throw them away. Save the glass. Save the clear. Because you can use your clear glass. I mean, is there a problem about thickness, though, sometimes? They're all different. Like, this one's pretty thick. Um, 
That does that does it. that cause a problem meshing in designs? Mm -hmm. No, so there's, it, there's it kind of adds kind. to yeah the character of yeah, it, right? Exactly. Yep. Cause some of these, yeah, some of these have texture and different. Some people are, I guess, more anal than me, but I, 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 I don't with that. I'm just like, you know what? It's fine. Yeah. But anyway, this is where you would go, like if you had to cut all these pieces to get them as close as you can to your pattern, and then what you do, you're gonna go in there to the grinder and grind it down okay, and awesome. then you wrap it with your foil and you did yeah put it back together so there's like the little piece at the top awesome for pieces that are not pre-bought we've right. got so you you know if you you hand cut your glass and you you get them to where you need them to be and these are kind of wonky little pieces bizarre looking little shapes but i can still see my lines that i need to follow like where I need to grind, and I'm assuming where I drew it on there. Cutting. On the pattern. I'm assuming cutting the glass is most potential to cut yourself. Yes, <laughs> yes. You will have lots, lots of bloody fingers. Uh. Lots of bloody, <laughs> lot a lot of bloody fingers. So then, uh, this is a, a diamond grinder, and you oh. can get different coarse coarseness like this one's. Okay, and I saw you putting coarse. water in it. Right? Yeah, it has to have water on it. Okay, because it'll get too keep hot. It, yeah, right. keeps it lubricated. And you can touch your hand like this too, but. So what happens if you accidentally grind down too much? Uh, you'll probably be cutting another piece of glass. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Like you can't just, you can't just, uh, well, we got our safety goggles like, there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you can't just fill that up with solder or something and try to yeah. fudge it. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if the if the space is not too far, like if you, you know, you've just got like a little tiny gap. Uh-huh. Yeah, you can. You okay. Can. You can save yourself with solder. Okay. But if it's really, if it's a big hole and you're like, okay, no, I've got to, we need to recut that. So then your little edges are all smooth and your glass looks ready to go and it matches its little, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. You've got it ready to put back in its little place or ready to clean it off and then wrap it in full. Now, what if you were lazy and didn't want to grind it down and you just did, had kind of sharp edges? How bad would that be? That would be like when I first started and I tried. <laughs> and it was like, what is that? It looks like a kindergarten. So it looks bad. It's it does. not. It, it won't hold the tape. It mm. won't, you know, you can't get your foil down on there and get the air bubbles out. Mm -hmm. It's not going to match up to its pieces. You know, your pattern, it's not going okay. to match right. So you got to do it right. <laughs> yeah. Grinder is your best friend. Like some people are like, oh, you can just use sandpaper and grind it. And yeah, you'll be there all night. Gotcha. No, get one of those. Well, I think I'll make a list of some of the products yeah. and like post this it. This is a really good brand. So. They make a lot of stained glass stuff. Okay. Yep. So what would you say is the hardest part or hardest learning curve? Because, I mean, showing this, it might seem like, oh, I'll just order supplies and do it myself. I like, know. what is the hardest part? Learning how to cut without breaking your you know, the tiny pieces or curves, mm -hmm. cutting curves. Those are super hard. Um, I had a lot of frustration learning how to cut. Uh, one of my pieces that I've done that's on the, the website or the Facebook page is mm -hmm. Elvis. Oh. And he had tons of oh, small, yeah. tiny little pieces. And some glass is more, it's more fragile than others. Like his hair yeah. was a black opaque glass and mm -hmm. it barely touched it it broke or shattered in two mm -hmm. so I had to cut so many pieces to get his pompadour hair you know and so I would imagine someone who wants to get started would maybe do more of this yes we're not having to cut yeah. and grind yeah that way and you just can, yeah come off with some right pre-done <laughs> right and then you can practice your soldering getting it smooth you know mm -hmm. making your welds look good and then you can get you know move on to okay I want to do my own pattern and cut my own glass. Awesome. And definitely try scraps first. See if somebody has, and you can buy scrap glass on eBay. Yeah. People will sell like little boxes of scrap stained glass and that's a good way to start. That's what I did. That's awesome. Yep. Well, thank you so much yeah. for joining us and teaching me how. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. I love learning. I love crafting. Thus this channel and I love teaching and sharing what I learn. So these are just a few more of some of the favorite ones that she has on her Facebook. I definitely have the link down below. So if you're interested in ordering from her and uh, seeing what she could do getting a custom quote, hit her up on Facebook. And uh, if you are interested in dabbling yourself, I've uh, run up by her a list of products that would be good quality and where you can get them. 
in the description. So thank you so much for joining me here on Jen's Creativity Corner. As always, I appreciate your support through all those likes, comments, subscribes, and shares. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.